Hello, my name is Stefan Bauman and this is Jordi Nicoli and uh, we're sitting here at uh, Bradley Park in Walden, New York mm -hmm. and uh, you grew up in this town, correct? Yep. All right. So in this town um, and also I, I would say this whole state for the most part, um, drug addiction is a, is a huge problem. Yeah. Um, country. Yeah, country. <laughs> Probably the world. Yeah. Um, have you, you yourself are in recovery right now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, how long have you been clean? Um, next month will be two years. Congratulations. Thank you. That's really awesome. Now, um, do you mind me asking, like, what, what was your uh, drug of choice when you were doing? Um, well, it's changed over the years, but my last run, um, for like three years, two and a half, three years, was, um, IV, which is obviously a shooting mm -hmm. needle, um, methamphetamines sometimes, but mostly molly and bath salts. I didn't know you could shoot methamphetamine. Hmm. Yes. You definitely can. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Most people say that about Molly. They didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know you could snort it until I went to college and I saw kids doing it. I'm like, what are you doing, coke? They're like, no, it's Molly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, but what was um, what was it that brought you to, to finally get into recovery? Like, what was the, the Ooh, final what straw? What didn't? What didn't? Um, it was a rough two and a half years. I mean... It seemed fun at first, staying up all night for weeks, and it became, I lost my job surveying. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't lose it, I just kind of quit, because how do you go to work when you're on that stuff? Yeah, yeah you can't, you can't. So um, basically, yeah, I quit. Um, quit my job in October of 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, after that, it was, I saw it in my apartment, and that became pretty unmanageable. Um, I lost my electric uh, two times for over six months. Mm -hmm. I would sleep in my car in places because at least I was like not in my house where I couldn't see. So it was the craziest thing. I've slept behind certain stores in the area way back in the parking lot. And I had an apartment, but it just became more of a trap house mm -hmm. than uh, a place to want to stay and sleep. So um, losing everything, getting down to 100 pounds, I felt like I was just, I was just done. Like I just did not, as much as I thought I was going to live like that for the rest of my life, I just was like, nah, I, you know, I, I got to do something about it. So um, my parents let me go stay with them as long as I was going to go in to get, you know, get help in rehab. Mm -hmm. And it took me a minute to get in, and, but I stayed there. And it's actually, it's actually really weird how I was originally going to go to short-term rehab to get into long-term. Usually you can go from short-term to long-term. I didn't know you could skip short-term and go right to long-term. So, um, yeah, I didn't know that either, but um, I was with someone at the time we were kind of just broke up like mm -hmm. five months ago but we were together five and a half years and this is the person that shared all these experiences with me and we wanted to get clean together so she went first in the short term and went to long term and uh when i tried to get into rehab they were like you need to use or not you need to use they will never tell you, you need to use but i didn't use for like three days so they're like if you if you come up clean when we drug test you you're not going to get in basically because there's someone that is, you know, they're going to... Why the hell would you go there if you weren't having an issue? That's just how, I don't know, it's always been an issue like that. So, I actually went and used one last time to get into rehab. Um, I made it as far as Arms Acres and Carmel. I was supposed to get transferred from there to, like, Conifer Park. And the anxiety and paranoia, I had to leave. I walked down in the town, stayed there for, like, six hours sitting on a bench. Somehow, I used somebody's phone, called my father, he came, picked me up. He's like, what are you doing? And... I was like, I can't, I can't go to rehab right now. So <laughs> went back to my parents and I didn't use for like two weeks because when a week later I called another re uh, rehab long-term and they were like, do not use. I was like, really? I, I don't, I was like, I don't have to use. They're like, no. I was like, they're like, you better not piss, you know, piss dirty. And I was like, I, I won't, I won't. I can't so, believe that the other place made you do that. Well, they, they basically, without saying to use, because yeah. they can't tell you to go use, but you, they drug test you for a I reason. mean, they basically said it to you without saying it. Exactly. I mean, it's blatantly obvious. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, but I know a lot of rehabs do that. Like, you can't go in there and just like I used yesterday, or maybe you can because. Like, why would you lie to go to rehab? I don't know. They think that it, like there's someone that just shot up something else that could use that bed more than you if you didn't use for 24 hours, say. But I had a few days clean, and because I stayed at my parents' house and I did not leave unless I walked to the store to get cigarettes. I was like, I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to go to rehab so yeah. bad. I was just, for someone who wanted to go to rehab that bad, you must want it, so. Yeah. That's <laughs> at that point. Um, now, you had mentioned when we were talking earlier, um, hugs, or no, hope not handcuffs. Right. Was that 
Did you utilize that service when you got into it? It wasn't or? around here yet. It wasn't? Okay. No, I believe just in the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. Maybe last year it came into this area. Okay, that's awesome. And um, so what what is the main thing about them that, that they do for the community? That um, Well, the, the police departments have to participate in it for them to be a part of it. And they cannot reach out to police departments. So... Only the police departments can reach out to them, if that sounds confusing. But, well, that's good, because um, it takes yeah. out corruption. So, um, if you want to get help, you basically can go to one of the police departments that participates in it. And there's actually a lot in this area now. Mm -hmm. um, there's the website. You can go look to see everyone um, of the departments that participate. And um, if you go in and say you want to get help, the thing is that makes it actually, like, why it works so well is because you can pre pretty much get in the same night mm -hmm. as where you go on your own. They'll be like, I'll oh, call next tomorrow for a bed. See, so you, you know, call in a couple of days, and or they'll call you back to let you know when a bed's available. And the biggest thing is time. Yeah. Like if you get to the point you want to go to rehab, and then they tell you a week, two weeks, it's it's so oh, discouraging. Oh yeah, and go get high again. It's so discouraging. Yes. Mm. Or maybe overdose, and you don't even make it. I don't. I don't know. But that's the biggest thing of why it works mostly. And they get you in that time that night, and thank God. Uh, yeah. And um. In terms of like what you see in this community, because obviously it's not just in this town, but like no, this right. whole area. Like, yeah. Um, even in my town, I worked in a doctor's <laughs> office. We treat patients with Suboxone and everything like that, and it's just it, it's so out of control. And the majority of the people that I spoke to when I was working in the doctor's office, a lot of them said it was started from taking pain pills for a procedure or something, yeah. and then it just spiraled from there. Yep. Um, and when you look. When was it? Two years ago that they had that giant bust in Middletown at the firehouse. Yeah, I know you're. Yeah. Yeah, like I yeah I knew a couple people. I guess I saw bags of pill involved. bottles. Yep. I'm like, how can doctors like prescribe that much and not think anything There's of it? There's shady doctors. It's um, a lot. Years ago, I remember a couple people had certain doctors. Yeah. That would give up. They've to made it much but more it difficult But it wasn't like now. scripts. It was like literally. I don't know how you explain it. It wasn't written down, put that way. I don't know how it got by, but... It was a lot looser before they realized that it was yeah. such a big problem. Um, it, it's... You realize we're the only... We're one of two countries in the world, I believe, who are allowed, by law, to advertise medications to people on TV? No, I didn't know that. Everybody else, it's legal. And that's basically what drives it. Yeah. But, um... What do you think are... What do you think would be some useful advice for somebody who is where you were a few years ago and making that decision of whether or not to go to rehab or to just just to give up? Um, wow. Well, I mean, I never thought I could be clean this long. So, I don't know, getting clean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's actually worth it. I didn't, you know, I'm in a 12-step program, um, and I'm in there because I want to be, yeah. and it's, it's kind of, I thought it was weird at first. I'm like, what is this? But yeah, I almost walked out when I went in. I was like, wait a second, this is like a cult. That's what a lot of people <laughs> say at first, but um, I don't know. It, it, works, it works, I guess. You know, yeah. um, I'm not as big into meetings as I was then, but it's also the pandemic, so they were closed down. That's another thing. I know so many people who were clean when this pandemic started who have either passed away, because it's not just the two from a week and a half ago. I know probably 10 to 15 people in the last, uh, what, since March? Or if they didn't pass away, they've relapsed. Wow. They stopped getting drug tested through... I was wondering about that. They stopped getting drug, uh, drug tested through um, drug court, outpatients, and a lot of them are on paper. Yeah, we or, had to turn them away and say you couldn't come in, and then and, some of the doctors would still write the script for whatever they needed. Okay, yeah. Um, but it was like they had to come in and drop off urine and then leave. See, I know a lot of people who didn't even have to even do that. Yeah. They just... Yeah. Yeah, everything the went The doctors... Down. Well, a lot of doctors were just like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Right. Like, it, it just so, like, switching to telemedicine was such, um, when you really think about that, like, that, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, we went, that means, like, obviously they've been working on this for years. It seems like that. For it to just roll out perfectly in time for a yeah. pandemic. Like, I mean, they said that they had to push it ahead of schedule about four, two to four years or something like that, but that that was on its way, and 
I'm surprised that they're allowing it because a lot of physicians are dead set against doing telemedicine. Why wouldn't they be? They want to see their patient right. in person so that they can give a real sense. exam. I think some would be fine um, if you're checking in with, which isn't a doctor, but like probation or something. I mean, you still got to see them, but at least they can like... Your general zoom, practitioner, you can see them. I think, is fine. Yeah. If you need to get a refill on your blood pressure meds or whatever, right, you're okay. come in for your quarterly checks or whatever it is that they require you to do. But, you know, you know, for somebody like myself, I, I have... I have uh, narcolepsy, so I have to take medication to stay awake. Right. I basically have to take Adderall, and um, not the typical use for it, but it it does work. And um, but I have to go in every single month to get that strip filled. I'm or, on anxiety medicine, and I have to go every three months. Every three months, you're right. Sorry, every three months, and um, it sucks because you're like everybody's like, why don't you just pick up and go to India or do something? I'm like, well, now obviously I can't, but I'm like. You don't understand, like, I gotta organize all that. Yeah, that's not, that's not that <laughs> like, easy. I, and I don't mean smuggling it across the border. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a difference here. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it when I go there. So, it's just, um, it adds another layer of complexity. Yep. Um, well, I appreciate you coming out and talking with us. And um, I'm sure we'll be hearing from you again soon. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.